This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. We're actually on part 98, 98, of Understanding the Kingdom, and I may eventually switch it up and change to another series. But, uh, you know, the last session uh, I posted Sheep Nations and the task at hand posted it on YouTube, and it was taken down within minutes. Because in the beginning of it, when I was dealing with the threat matrix, my prophetic threat metrics, I just commented for a minute and a half on health situations that the people are facing right now, and it got slapped down faster than uh, a chicken on a bug. And uh, I mean, I literally posted it, it's there, everybody's going to be happy, I got caught up, everything's done, everything's up. I get home and I start getting emails, they pulled it, they pulled it, they pulled it, they pulled it, they pulled it. Um, you know, one of the first things that I've done is as of this morning, we have all the videos that we had on YouTube have completely downloaded and we have them backed up. Okay. Uh, we're moving to Rumble. We have a Rumble station, rumble.com slash biblical life TV. And what, I've, what I have found interesting with Rumble, I fought for a year to get my bank to approve the debit every month. And they said, well, you know, the algorithms will learn. Well, they didn't learn in 12 months because it's not controlled. We have, we, guys, I, I think we need to re-examine social media. Are you tired of being a guinea pig? All of it's to condition us. You know, after this thing with uh, YouTube hit, for the first time in months, I actually went and looked at Facebook. I don't, I never go to Facebook because when I post a video, it literally, whenever I post it on KIB, it automatically is posted on Facebook. I don't have to go there. And so it's been months and months since I've even been there. And so I start scrolling through, and all of a sudden, everybody's posts are blurred. And uh, it had on there, there's some information on this post that might not be factual. Well, when I unblurred it, that's human nature. I want to see what they don't want me to see. Many times it was Scripture. I know that uh, Steffi had posted something about homesteading and, you know, the need to raise your own food. And, not, and so what Facebook did and asked that of one of her friends, they say, do you still want to be friends with Steffi because she posted this? Ain't none of your business. She's my friend. She ain't your friend. Could you imagine you're on the phone with a friend and the operator steps in and says, I don't like the way this conversation is going. I think you should hang up. There are many of us tell the operator just exactly what we thought about that in, in quick fashion. But we put up with it because it's convenient. All the time, like on Facebook, when I post anything, if I really want people to see it, I got to pay them money. They make money off what they can get you to do and not do. Or how many times that you get a thrill that, oh, somebody liked it, somebody liked it, <laughs> somebody liked it. Who cares? But they're conditioning us. 
It, it, it was a psyop. All this stuff is psyops, and they're making millions of dollars while putting us in this box that gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Don't put homie in no box, because first of all, you've got to have a big box to fit me in to begin with. Okay. But I'll just get out of that sandbox, and I'll go make my own box. And that's part of what we're doing uh, with moving to Rumble. Uh, I also talked to the, uh, the owner of Livestreams TV, and they have their own satellite channel, they have their own network, they own their own servers, and I'm getting ready to send him a hard drive with our entire archive on it that they're going to put on their servers. I'm also going to, con I'm also going to connect with Skywatch TV and find out what service they're paying for, that it's a Christian service that owns their, all their own servers, put that on there, because... Uh, we, there, guys, I, th I think one of the things that we have not realized, because of the affluence that America has afforded us over the last 200 years, we are living in hostile territory. We have always been living in hostile territory. The only difference was, in the past, we have been salt and light enough in the earth to keep it at a distance. But if you ever had anybody went to university, or you would actually hear politicians talking behind the scenes... They hate us with a fervent passion. And corporations hate us with a fervent passion. And so I began this process of backing all this stuff up. Not only did I find a skinnier me, I found a less gray me. I went all the way back and I just had two little patches of gray right here. And I call that Steffi learning how to drive and Lisa learning how to drive way back when. Okay. But I begin to notice, and I'll look back and kind of chuckle because the video went from this to this because it was at 480p. You know, we're now filming at 1020p, and some ministries are filming at 4K, and hopefully when we get the new building done, we'll be filming at 4K high definition over there. But it's like, you get to those old ones, it shrinks down, and you know, the old shofar, and started watching those, and I begin paying attention to some of the titles way back then, and it has nothing to do with me. How many know when you listen to the Holy Spirit? It, 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 there's, there's power to listening to the Spirit of God on, on what we're supposed to cover and what's supposed to be taught. Uh, I marvel at Mary because Mary really seeks the face of God over every single podcast. And uh, then she'll come in, then I'll add my two cents in, because everybody knows I always do that. Uh, but just the response we get on this was a word in season. I needed to hear that. You don't know the questions that you answered. When you follow the Spirit of God, it's scholarship plus following the Spirit of God, and that is so necessary. And uh, I look back, Remnant Boot Camp, the uh, bond servant, end time, end of days, pro uh, end time prophecy, overcoming the spirit of entropy, taking down giants, the coming shaking. You want to talk about a prophetic word, Okay. Uh, no more compromise, preparing for the coming storm. I think one of the things that we as believers do is we have this 30-second attention span. And if somebody gives a prophetic word and it doesn't come to pass in 30 seconds, we want to relegate them to being a false prophet. Boy, then Isaiah would have really had a hard time because it was hundreds and hundreds of years before unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. We're, we're so short-sighted, and we miss the, the grace of God and that how God, if you're listening, and it's not just me, there's many, many other ministries that have been saying many of the same things. Because of the grace of God, God is saying, there's a storm coming, there's a battle coming, there's things getting ready to change. Prepare now, get your hearts right now, learn how to do warfare now. How many know that it's better to learn how to shoot before you end up in a foxhole? I remember when I was going through basic training and you know, the first thing we had to do is zero in our weapon. It took me nine shots, no, uh, yeah, six shots. Because the second time around, I had it zeroed in. And there were guys that were there for a couple of hours because they couldn't even hit the target. Okay, I, I had fired firearms before I went into the military. And then they put us in foxholes, and you would have these guys pop up, you know, anywhere from 
uh, 30 meters away to 300 meters away, and you're supposed to knock them down. And guys were looking for bigger rocks, you know. And, I'm, and back then, the, I remember the drill sergeant says, y'all going to die if you can't hit that target, you know. How many times, and, and what, was, what was that? That was training to prepare that if the day ever happened where you found yourself in a foxhole, you could actually hit the target. Well, how many things has the Holy Spirit been, been putting forth in our lives and messages from the pulpit on things to pray about, things to change, to prepare for the days ahead? I even believe that with some of the current health challenges that are going on today, and I'm avoiding a lot of specific language, um, that back in the 90s, God began having us eat biblically clean foods. Because in that process of detoxing and getting that stuff out of your, our systems, we're in a sense better prepared because you're not, you're not um, the effectiveness of your immune system has not been greatly reduced. Okay? And, you know, especially with eating pork, you, you can eat pork and test positive for cancer because it's in your bloodstream. So imagine your body fighting that constantly, and so your immune system is exhausted before you come across some virus or some, uh, you know, bug or something somewhere. That's why everybody constantly had colds all the time and everything else. Mary and I look back at how sickly we were back then. Uh, it was pitiful. And, when, of course, everybody that we knew was the same way, so that's just life in America, right? But God, in His wisdom, began having us change things because God knew the days that we were facing and said, I love you enough to give you a warning. There's a storm approaching. You're living in hostile territory. And they have been regathering the troops. Now, if you have your Bibles this morning, I want to go to John chapter 16 and verse 33. And Jesus got through sharing some things with them. And he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you, might, you may have shalom, that you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now the way that the, the American Christian reads that is, In this world you will have tribulation, but one, eventually one day there's going to be a nation founded called America. And once America has been founded and you have a constitution, the tribulation will cease. Isn't that kind of the way that a lot of things are preached? Of course, you know, there were a lot of us in bondage back then, and, and everybody's talking about being blessed, and we were tribulating, you know. Uh, I remember one of Mary's favorite sayings was, you know, the, they always walked around telling about how the devil's teeth were pulled out, and she said, I tell you what, he's gumming me to death, you know, because things didn't connect. As long as we're in this world, we are going to have tribulation. Now, the Greek word here is solipsis, which means a pressing, a pressing together, pressure. Anybody ever feel any pressure besides from a sinus headache? Pressure from kinfolk, pressure from society, conform, conform, conform! Sometimes pressure from believers to conform to their things, many times that aren't even found in the Bible, that are simply tradition. You must conform! All of that was by the grace of God. You know why? One day, they're going to say, take the mark. Take the mark, bow to the system, worship the new world leader. He's a Nephilim after all. We're getting ready to have the old God show back up. You see, when Jesus said in the days of Noah, it was not only the giants, the watchers and the, and the Nephilim ruled planet Earth. They were the kings. They were the Hercules. They were the Apollo. They were the Saturn. They were the rulers that came with hidden knowledge. And they ruled what Nimrod tried to do, he, uh, I, you know, 
Sir Francis Bacon actually kind of uh, stole from Nimrod because Nimrod was trying to create the first new Atlantis. That's what the Tower of Babylon and Babylon was all about, trying to recreate what was lost after the flood. And they're coming back. The Bible says in the last days that men's hearts will fail them for fear of what's coming upon the earth. How I many know there's always been war upon the earth? There's been weapons of mass destruction of various types forever. But things are about to get freaky. Okay? When you start seeing the old gods return. And one of the things Timothy Alberino just recently brought up, and it actually goes to uh, a Marvel movie, which I think a lot of these guys that are writing this stuff has always been in the mystery religions. They're, they, they use this, and I, you know, I, I love superheroes, you know. Who doesn't want to be bit by a spider and wake up the next morning and have superpowers, especially if you're a nerd, okay? Um, but it was about the old gods, and it was taking the mythology and working it into a modern format. In fact, I got a book in my library that's entitled, My God Does Not Wear Spandex. Talking about this, the superheroes. And they drew from that in the one called The Eternals. I've not seen it. Don't I don't want to see it. But there's ten of them. And Timothy Alberto said, you know, it's really interesting that Poseidon, which actually was, who was the one ruling Atlantis, that when you look at the research that Stan Deo did, he actually found where original Atlantis was, and it was near the Middle East. And one of the things that precipitated the Great Flood is this planet was hit by an asteroid. And you can literally still see on the ocean floor where it hit and the scoop mark and how it took out Atlantis. Poseidon had ten Nephilim sons. It kind of makes you think. We, we're thinking ten kings? Well, it's got to be financial empire. It's got to be actual kingdoms. How about if it's the old ten kingdoms of the sons of Poseidon that return, and we have the Eternals coming to save humanity from the deviants? And the deviants, of course, is the body of Christ. We're the monsters, according to them. Because we're holding them back from their evolution. Guys, we've got to wake up. You know what, though? I'm encouraged by the Word of God. There was a little shepherd boy that had a giant in front of him. He did not have a 308 AR-15. Of course, with me, I prefer a bazooka, but that's a whole other thing. He had a slingshot and a shepherd's staff and the power of God, and he took down a giant when an entire army was setting in absolute fear of it. You see, there's a strength on the inside of you who understand covenant that you've never even tapped into yet. I've seen Mary tap into it because I think she, there, there are times that the Holy Ghost said her, she'd, she'd take on a bear. But there's a strength on the inside of us of who we are in Christ that you don't press into unless you're being pressed upon. How many in your life have always felt like just an old lump of coal? Okay. Do you know what makes a diamond? The only difference between a piece of coal and diamond is the pressure that was exerted upon it. There's a diamond on the inside of all of us that, are, that those of us that have prepared that have heard what the Spirit of God has said to us. We're getting ready to shine forth as jewels befitting for the crown of Jesus. Oh. Yeah, it's about ready to get real. But you know what? When it gets real, that's when, listen to me, you start seeing the dead rise. You start seeing the lame walk. You start seeing your taxes in the mouth of a fish that you went out and pulled up out of a creek somewhere that had a gold, gold coin. You know, a one ounce gold coin right now would pay a lot of tax, wouldn't it? All because, you know, I don't, there's a lot of men here in the Ozarks. I heard from the Lord. He told me to go fishing. I think they'd get into that, wouldn't you? So especially if you went out there and pulled a gold coin out of its mouth. When we read the book of Acts, it was a time of pressure on all sides. They were rejected by the Jewish people, and they were rejected by the Romans. 
And it was out of that forge that we see the church birthed in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And there's a fire getting ready to come to the church, the remnant that have prepared and that have heard him. Now, John also reminds us of the words of Jesus, and this is found in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. In fact, if one, of my, uh, one of the things I have come to realize, if you want to learn how to survive the book of Revelation, start taking apart the book of 1 John. He wrote it after the book of Revelation, and it's the only book of the Bible that you will find the word Antichrist in it. Because he saw what that spirit did on planet Earth. He says, how can I prepare the sheep? How can I prepare them? And so he writes the book of 1 John. This is starting in verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many of them have YouTube channels. Many of them are wild to behold. And they will tell you what you want to hear instead of the correction that you need to hear. When I read the prophets in the Old Testament, not only there was first correction and then hope. Correction, then hope. Correction, and then hope. Today's prophets, it's hope, 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 bless, 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 hope, 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 bless, bless, bless. Oh, God's getting ready to come down and give you this big feather pillow that you can rest your weary head on and you're just going to float through. True prophets always call God's people back to the ways of God. Back to the cross. Back to, back to Moses even. That's what all of them did. In fact, Jesus and John the Baptist rebuked Israel for leaving Torah. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now stop right there. What does that mean? What does that mean in the ears of the first century church. Remember when the Apostle Paul, now this was written 30 years after the Apostle Paul wrote his last epistle. His last epistle was 2 Timothy. He literally penned that the day before he was executed. When he said, my race is done, I have won the fight, I have finished the race. The next morning he ran into the hands of the executioner. He was ready to check out and go home. Thirty years after that, in the book of Romans, the Romans wrote a salvation if you will confess that Jesus is Lord. You're not hearing with Jewish ears. Yahweh, they had kind of lost how to pronounce it and did not want to pronounce it very much. Well. In fact, the only time they would usually pronounce it in public after Babylon, because in Babylon there was a term, there was a slang word created for the Jewish people called yahoos, because they followed Yahweh, okay? And so it so grieved them that the name of God was being taken in vain, they would not pronounce the name, and so they would simply say Adonai. Now, anybody who's read any Jewish writings, you'll run across Adonai. The really devout ones will simply say the name. They'll actually take Adonai out. What is Adonai in English? Lord. If you will confess that Jesus is Yahweh in your heart, that he came to save you, and you call upon his name. It's even in the, in the Psalms. It literally says, And Yahweh has become my Yeshua. The Lord has become my salvation. It's literally in a prophetic word from David. And so Jesus was not just a prophet. He was not just a good man. He was almighty God come in the flesh. He was Emmanuel, God with us. And any spirit that says anything other than that is not of the spirit of God. And the Antichrist spirit is going about foaming every other kind of, of uh, theory that you can think of except, you see, every time that we see almighty God in the Old Testament, except for the ancient of days, 
in the vision of Daniel? It's Jesus. Now what's different about the vision of the ancient of days? The Son of Man, Jesus, was standing before the Father, the ancient of days. And even the rabbis will tell you that that Son of Man is the only knowable aspect of God. And if it's the only knowable aspect of God, then that's how Adam knew him, that's how Moses knew him, that's how Abraham knew him, that's how all the prophets knew him. Jesus is the only way to the Father, Old Testament and New Testament. Okay? And if they rejected it, it was Almighty God come in the flesh. Then this spirit is Antichrist. And you have heard, you heard was coming and now all, is already in the world. Man, there are many Antichrist spirits. There are more Antichrist spirits than there are liver pills. Then Carter has liver pills. They fill our universities. They fill the philosophy of corporations and political movements. He says, listen, not only come, he's already now in the world. But listen to this. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the earth. God in you is greater than then you can begin to understand. You will begin understanding in the days ahead. You see this Jesus, well, Mike, we're just filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when he was talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit, he said the Holy Spirit's coming to you, and he, later on he says, and I will come to you. We only have one God manifested in three aspects in the universe. But the Holy Spirit is the presence of Jesus. Jesus moved on the inside of you. you, oh, you oh. Did you ever see a guy getting ready for a fight or a battle and he goes like this? Jesus is getting ready to do that on the inside of the remnant because he's getting ready to stand up. He's getting ready to stand up like nobody's business. And my crying is not old age and extra estrogen. <laughs> it's I long to see it. You see, I have seen some things in the past. I have seen some things where demons fled. The sick were healed. People were saved one after another, after another, after another. I've seen it. I want to see it again in my lifetime. But I want to see it on steroids. I want to see it with this end time prophecy anointing that's coming. He says, now they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. Who, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. For by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Why is the church so consumed with getting the world to like us? The only way for the world to like you is you've got to quit following Jesus and quit being like Jesus. Then the world will like you. There's no other way. You can preach a social gospel. You can preach about, throw $100 right here at this TV screen, and all this money is going to come flying into your life just so quick, you're not going to have a wallet big enough to handle it. How many are tired of the prosperity gospel? Because it's, now, does God want to meet your needs? Yes, he does. But how many know God's not, not out to make people millionaires? There have been some millionaires. Anybody ever hear of Colgate? What you don't know about Colgate is the pharmacist that invented the toothpaste that became Colgate was a Christian. And he became a millionaire by giving 90% of his income to the, to the shed, to the making the gospel abroad and gave it to missions and gave it to the, to the preaching of the gospel. It may not be that way now because, you know, things get eat up and, and bought up by the corporate world. 
And he made enough money, that God made, made sure that he had enough money that he could live on 10% of his income and he lived well. But that's not what heaven, heaven is about. Jesus said, listen, you think you're rich and you're clothed in glamour? And he said, you're naked and you're wretched and you're poor. Buy of me gold. Biblically, that represents holiness. You got to give up stuff to be holy. Our carnal nature. All the fancy doodle wops of the world, okay? All the, all the things that, that call us, you're having a bad day. Just trust in me. I'll make you feel better. I am so disenchanted with all of that, it's not even funny. It's God. Jesus makes everything better. He'll make a bad day better. I can't tell you the number of times over the years, and Mary will testify, that I have felt so bad because of allergies or sickness, I couldn't even hardly stand up until I got in the pulpit. It's amazing what the anointing of God will do. Now, sometimes I kind of fell over after I got done, and sometimes I didn't. It, it just continued. The, the presence of God drove that thing out. What does that teach you? If you stay full of God, there's less room for the other stuff. When the other stuff sneaks in, try to make more room for God. Why? Because greater is he that's in you. Let's don't give Jesus just a little dab. Let's go ahead and give him the whole ball of wax and let him fill it and control it. We need to understand that the spirit of Antichrist is ascending in the world today. It's filling our universities. Why are Christians sending our kids to these universities anymore? Filling their head full of garbage. They go, they go in believers and come out Marxists. We ought to bankrupt them by quit sending our kids to it. Every patriot ought to do the same thing. Quit playing the, the semantic games. Is critical race theory being taught in all the schools? Yep. They just don't officially call the name of that that, but it's embedded in everything they do. But they're teaching their teachers that. Well, Mike, what's so bad about that? I have no problem sharing the past prejudices that we had in America and how sad it was and how far we fell from the noble aspirations of both the Constitution and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have no problem with that whatsoever because we have utterly failed and it is a shame. In fact, we've actually had Baptist denominations that were established that it was a whites only club. And I, I, I'm, I'm old military, okay? I, I went into military right out of high school. What I found out, there was only one color I recognized. It was way back when they had OD green fatigues. That if you're in war, and that's your buddy, he's your brother in arms. As long as he's wearing the right uniform, you learn what the enemy's uniform looks like. You don't want to let, back then it was, you don't want to let a Rustin into your foxhole. You don't want to do that, okay? Bad news, it turns red quick and it may be your blood. So it didn't matter the color of somebody's skin. It mattered the army that they were in. Oh, you're going to get it here in a minute. In the body of Christ, the stupid thing of skin pigmentation doesn't matter. You're either of the devil or you're of the kingdom. And that's why communism hates the true church, is we live what they can't when we do it right. What I have a problem with is critical race theory postulates the only way to overcome this racism is with a greater racism. So now everybody has to be, you have to apologize for being white. I was raised poor. I mean, I remember as a little kid, I got a can of Campbell's soup for dinner. My mom ate jam and bread. That was her dinner. I know what poor is. I remember when going to White Castle was a treat. 
for five cent hamburgers. Oh, I'm so amazed now. White Castles were five cents? Yes, they were. Six with cheese. Okay. All of us have a story. All of us have gone through hard times. Now, the black community has gone through things in America that should have never have been. But the gold standard is Martin Luther King, who was a man of God. You don't respond with greater prejudice. That's a Marxist thing. You just respond with love. And look at the wonderful change they did in America by walking in love and walking unified. What would happen if the body of Christ, we would walk together arm in arm, every color, doesn't matter, because we've all been washed in the blood. All of our hearts were as black as coal, but Jesus came and saved us from our sin. If we would unify around the cross, it would terrify hell itself. Boy, I'm really off my notes. We need to understand that what they're doing right now in the censorship that the spirit of Antichrist is embedded in the algorithms. Now what's frightening to me on that is they're also implementing AI. So as they're maturing artificial intelligence, they're, they're, they are encoding the spirit of Antichrist into the very foundational code of AI. So no wonder when it becomes filled with a watcher because I do not think that a computer could ever become sentient but I think that they can develop a platform that can be inhabited by a watcher that will pretend to become sentient that embedded in it will be an absolute hatred for the body of Christ the gospel and the Word of God guys there are you know I was lucky to get one strike and I watch, and you know, I, I, you know, guys, you know, I can mention a ministry without agreeing with everything. You know, maybe, you know, I may agree with 99% of it. I may agree with 5% of it. When I bring up a ministry, it's to show what's going on. Uh, that Jim Staley's ministry, without ever receiving one strike, they took his channel down and erased over 3,000 videos without warning. May have gotten a phone call from the Vatican. Who knows? I mean, that happened to Timothy Alberino. We don't know. And so we're going to have to rethink how we do things in the future, okay? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. I'm not getting into the armor, but I'm going to get into the reason for the armor. How many know that the Word of God never asks of you something that the kingdom of God is not going to impart to you. Now, wouldn't it be ridiculous, I've got an eight-year-old grandson, wouldn't it be ridiculous for me to pop him behind a wheel and expect him to drive me to Walmart this afternoon? I mean, there's a good chance I'd never make it there. Okay. It's unreasonable, if not impossible, he couldn't even reach the pedals until he has been trained, he knows how to drive, and that you have made sure that he can pass the test to, to get a license. What makes you think when God says something is available to us that he's going to withhold it? He's waiting for us to mature to the place to begin walking in it. Okay. Finally, my brethren, so he wrote the whole book of Ephesians to get to this point. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That word strong means to be endued with strength, to receive strength. And it can even mean to be strong-headed. If you're going to be strong-headed, be strong-headed for the kingdom. Finally, my brethren, be endued with the strength of the Lord. Well, would the Apostle Paul say that if it was impossible? The word power there, kratos, means force, strength, might with great power, dominion, to walk in kingdom, be strengthened to enable you to walk in the kingdom. 
and in the power of his might, which is ability for strength or might. Did you just hear what he said? Be strong in the Lord and walk in his ability. Be strong in the Lord and walk in his ability. Why? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's the whole scenario. Jesus is waiting for a people. You know, there's one of the prophets. It starts out, God says, I look to and fro over the earth looking for someone that I may show myself strong to. We need to raise our hands and say, Lord, stop right here. Don't look any further. Me. Show yourself strong in me, through me, around me. I will do whatever I need to do to get Mike Lake out of the way. Move, please. I invite you, come. I'm sending up a flare, come, right here. I know you're looking, right here. You know, it's one thing for somebody not looking. But can you imagine you're, you're looking over a crowd and you're, look, you're looking for a friendly face that you know so that you can do something special for, and all of a sudden you start seeing a hand wave in the crowd? Oh man, I've been looking for you. Let me tell you something, Remnant. Jesus has been looking for you. He's been looking for you to get at the right spot at the right time that you'd say, you know what? Come rearrange everything so that I can be, I can be moving in your ability. I don't want to move in my ability. I want to move in your ability. Guys, there's more strength available to us than we realize. And the type of strength is only developed when Pressure when we pressure when we when we press into God. I remember reading a book years ago, and this minister was talking about all the pressure that's there being a minister, and usually most of the time it comes from the flock, from goats and baby sheep. Okay, and and he was sharing. He said, "Listen," he said, "It doesn't matter." He said, "It's like." Uh, a basketball, it doesn't matter how much pressure is on the outside of you, as long as on the inside you have a corresponding pressure pushing out. And I always read that, I said, boy, it wouldn't have been better if we were just a bowling ball. You can press on that thing all day, you're not going to get anything done. But God requires us to be filled with the Spirit. Just as that basketball is filled with air, and how many have ever had one? You take it on the court and you try to bounce it and it goes poop. You know what that's a sign of? It needs more air. And right now, a lot of the body of Christ, Jesus is trying to drill and it goes boop. And he say, hey, get filled with more of me. Get filled with more of me. We need to understand the protocols of engagement. How many know that you do not go after principalities and powers directly? Those are seven second heaven realities. Our authority was given in the first heaven. Now we can have authority over and we can move against their manifestation in the first heaven. But this whole thing where people were going up, you know, fighting principalities. I mean, it makes real good worship songs, but it's not biblical. Because even in the Old Testament, when they would go up to the high places to kick over the altars, it was still first heaven reality. Okay, I was army. Army does what army does. Air Force does what Air Force does. The angels are our Air Force. We go to the court of heaven. And we ask the Father to send warring angels to fight against the principalities and powers to free up the souls that they have in bondage over a region. You do not go up there with a stick and poke a bear yourself. And I've had people flippantly go on the internet and say, well, I can. Talk to me in five years if you're still around. You're out of bounds. Okay. And these people understood all this and the dynamic of what was going on in Ephesus, and I write about this in the, in the kingdom of priesthood. They understood the, because these principalities and powers control the culture, and they still do today. There is a principality and power over America. There is one over every single nation to include Israel, especially since most of them have rejected Messiah. 
The only way to get out of being under a principality or power is to be born again. And then I am translated out of the power of darkness, the grip, the control, the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I get an, I get an upgrade and I'm a citizen of, of, an, of a new nation, the kingdom of God. Okay. But they understood the wrestling because the Apostle Paul, years before when he went to Ephesus, Ephesus was a thousand-year-old city by the time he got there. How I many know that's a long time? That's almost hard to fathom. I mean, r right now America is about to go down the tubes and we're still in our diapers, historically speaking. Ephesus, according to their own legend, was founded by the Amazon women because they believed that that was the birthplace of Gaia. And so female deity worship was at the foundation and had ruled there for a thousand years. It used to be Artemis, then it became Diana. Paul comes preaching the gospel. People start getting saved, and they have a riot where the men of the city shook the city, crying out, great is Diana. And if that clerk had not intervened, they would have hunted down every Christian, including the apostle Paul, and they would have killed them all. You know what that was? That was a principality stirring the pot because it was protecting its hedge on Ephesus. And so they understood this dynamic in Ephesus. And he says, you've got to learn how to be strong in the Lord and, and learn how to move in his might and to use wisdom. And you're fighting for the souls of men to be salt and light in the midst of, the, of a contaminated culture. And see, that's what we have forgotten. We have been, you ever heard this, this phrase, separation of church and state? It does not exist in the Constitution. Separation of the state from the church does. It's called the First Amendment. You see, there was a time in this nation, there was, I think it's the 14th Amendment, I may be wrong, but it's the no religious clause. There was a time that Christianity was so strong in America, unless you were a Christian, you could not even run for office. The people wouldn't even let you. There were laws in states that you could not run for any civil office or federal office unless you were a believer. And so they passed, they, they passed the thing saying there could be no religious clause. And now they're violating it saying Christians should not run for public office. We used to fill all the offices, that's when things were a lot better. Okay. We need to understand that everything, the culture, if we do not become salt and light in media, technology, education, politics, government, law enforcement, how many like to have a born again, Holy Ghost filled sheriff that's watching over you that can hear from the Spirit of God? I think we got one here in Webster County from the things that I've heard. I like it. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, that deputy, I don't know why I went that way. It was off course of where I was supposed to go, but I solved this crime and I stopped the crime from happening and I saved a life just because the deputy was there at the right moment because God was leading him to protect and serve. I like that. In fact, even what they, they tell you in the, in the public about uh, defunding the police, in our African-American brothers in America, the majority of them, the vast majority, like 90 some odd percent, want more funding for the police. Communist tactic, because who guards our communities from a takeover? The police force. And most of them, many of them, believe it was a calling from God, at least that's the way it used to be. It was a calling from God to protect and serve. We need to understand that these principalities and powers, they seek to silence the church. They seek to stop the church from being salt and light in every, in every part of, of, of our culture. They also work to twist the gospel of the kingdom and corrupt the teaching of the word. I'm hearing from people all over the world saying it's hard to find anybody teaching the word anymore. Now, I've got enough friends and colleagues, I'm thinking, you know, for me it's like, what do you mean there's a bunch of us? But when you look in the aspect of over the whole world, my 200 friends or so and colleagues are a small group. 
that they have been, Marxists invaded our seminaries in America in the 1920s. A lot of the stuff being promoted is not word. And what, and what, we, what, we, how, what do we do today? We, we, we channel surf. A lot of ministers channel surf to get their messages to see what's the most popular and what brings the most crowds and gets the biggest offerings instead of doing what Judson Cornwell said that we should do. You got to go up the mountain and find your burning bush and let that fire light on you and then you come back down the mountain. That's where our, our ministers once again have to find that because then it begins infecting the nation. They also really put pressure on the church to disengage from the true war. Now, what is the true war? What's our task before us? Winning the lost, number one. Preaching the gospel, winning the lost. The other is training the body in the ways of Jesus. And the ways of Jesus start back in Genesis. Okay. You know, it's funny to me. The Pharisees and the Sadducees always wanted to argue Torah with Jesus, and Jesus was the one who dictated Torah to Moses. Okay. So it's like, and I've had this happen because somebody forgot who I was. They were trying to correct something I said because they said, what you said in, your, in, in this book, Shine Our Directive, you know, this says this and makes preeminence, and I'm thinking, no, it doesn't. It goes along with it because, dude, I wrote the book. You know, oh, you're that like, you know, they kind of back down. That's what was going on with Jesus. They were debating the author of the Torah. We, we've got that going on. When we, because it's, it's not just winning somebody to Jesus, we got to win hearts and souls to the kingdom. In other words, it's not just enough to get you saved where you have your little Willy Wonka golden ticket. I've got to immunize you against the virus of Mystery Babylon. And no, I'm not talking about a real virus. Okay, you YouTube checkers, I'm not. How many know that historically people have gotten bitten by the mystery religion bug? Do you notice in the life of uh, Solomon, even when the word said, don't marry a non-Israelite. He filled Jerusalem with wild women, didn't he? And then he writes the Psalms, it is so better to live in the rafters of a house than in a house with a wild, with a mad woman, you know. And so he, what he did is he built a palace for all his wives over on the other side of Jerusalem. And he'd go and just bring them one at a time, you know. But what was he doing? Hiram of Tyre, from where he got his cedar from, is the Hiram of Beth of Masonic folklore. And Hiram introduced the wisest man on the planet who wanted to know everything about the mystery religions. He understood at the Tower of Babel that wisdom was splintered up. Well, the princess, according to the mystery religions back then, the king was also the high priest of the mystery religions. And so his daughter was a priestess that had the knowledge of his faction or his, his little bit or glimmer of what he had. And so Solomon married them all, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle back together. And finally, at the end, with his hair sticking straight up, he says, all is vanity! Yeah! You have to be brain damaged for it to make sense. He got bit with it, and if he got bit with it, guys, it's easy for the church to get bit with it. It's easy, especially if it brings in the crowds. The charismatic movement is adrift with the New Age right now. The Baptist movement is adrift with Masons contaminating the pool. And you can go over so many other traditions that uh, have grown stale and dead that make their founders roll over in the grave and seek to face heaven saying, is there something you can do with this dead carcass that we call a denomination? Our job when we get these people in the Bible, in the Word, and teach them the precepts of Christ and the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God, 
Did you know when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were slaves to the epitome of the mystery religions in their day? They were trained inside and out. They, not only that, they, they knew how to do they, they watched them doing the rituals. They were the ones who were, who were constructing all their idols and all their gods and made all their temples. So how do you bring somebody out of that? The antidote was the Torah. Meditate on this. Get your mind straight. Get the junk out. Learn to start thinking like someone in covenant with God instead of somebody in the mystery religions. Because all of culture taught you to think, walk, and to be the wrong thing. We got to return back to the Word of God. Now, let's jump down to verse 16. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit so that you can get your stuff back from the devil. Is that what that says? Boy, it's been preached that way, hadn't it? Some of my stuff the devil took, I don't need back anything I get. I'm not going to get from his hand. I'm going to get from the hand of Jesus. And Jesus gives better stuff than the devil could ever give back to me. Praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit. Watching there and too with all perseverance. 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 That means it's not going to be changed overnight. Those of us with OCD and uh, ADHD and all the other Ds. It's not microwavable. Change, prayer, takes time to develop. Okay? Over all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and to make known the mystery of the gospel. For I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You know, I wonder, <coughs> I wonder the balance going on in a lot of churches today. The griping about the pastor compared to the praying for the pastor. You know, if you would spend less time griping about him and more time praying for him, there would be probably less things to gripe about. We need to pray over those that are really holding forth the truth that God would give them utterance while the principalities and powers are trying to silence them. Now, changes that I'm making, we're doing this with Rumble. I've already shared about what we're doing uh, with the media. Uh, I got too many websites. I got more websites than Carter has lever pills, and I'm beginning to put them all together. Uh, KIB is going to be the same as it always has been, although I'm watching WordPress because WordPress has also deleted people's websites because they didn't like what they were doing. In other words, it wasn't politically correct. So I've been kind of watching it. But I got two that are so outdated. Anybody ever been to biblicallifeassembly.org lately? It looks like it was done in the 90s. It was. <laughs> it is so old that Microsoft quit making the software 12 years ago. Okay. Uh, and so I'm going to be taking that one, biblical-life.com, uh, bringing them together. Uh, so when you go to biblicallifeassembly.org, it's simply going to take you to the biblical-life.com, and we're going to take the school website and convert it over to Biblical Life Assembly, the Strategic Remnant Learning Center. Okay? Now, what does that mean? Uh, what that means is I'm going to spend some time, and I'm going to better organize MP3 audio files. For, cause how many know that we actually have, I have series that were before video? I posted the first video in January of 2010. But I got stuff before that that was on the Biblical Life Assembly website. And so why aren't you going to do the videos? Because I'm looking at the long game. How many know it takes a hard drive this big to have all the videos? Okay. Most of them, especially the newer ones, when I upload them, they're like six, seven, eight gigabyte, okay? MP3 files are not. And so you can download them easily and transport them. God was reminding me this morning when I was in, um, when I was in the military over in Germany, we were so hungry for truth. And I remember 
somebody mailed away. Because, I mean, all we had was, uh, you know, everything was in German, okay? And it was, and it was, and it was in a completely different. You could even get German TV unless you had a German TV because it was different than how we get our stuff, UHF, VHF, or whatever. And we had one station, the Armed Forces Station. Everybody found out who shot JR 10 months before we did. Okay. And I remember, this is in the day of the cassette tape and the VHS tape, okay? That if somebody got a teaching series on, on, on video or on audio, it was like gold. And I, I remember at church, we, we would have waiting lists. I don't care if there are 24 tapes of that series, you got two weeks because you have 200 people waiting to get a hold of that set. And I remember when they, uh, when Panasonic brought out a deck, no, it wasn't Panasonic, it was Marantz, brought out a deck that would automatically reverse and you had two places for cassettes so that you could duplicate. Mm. RPX could not keep them in stock because every Christian bought them so they could begin building their own library. There was such a hunger. I think we're going to see that again. But you know what? When you're part of the resistance, this is a whole lot easier to pass to somebody. Did you know that for the price of what I used to pay for an 8 gigabyte flash drive, you can get a 64 gigabyte flash drive? I can put thousands of messages, I can put study guides in PDF, and you can palm it to somebody and Big Brother can't see it. Or it's really easy to download. I have high speed download DSL here. I got 300 megabit per second. And it took me two months to download all my stuff off of YouTube in video. Or when we get it, we get it organized, you can jump over to the Strategic Remnant Learning Center and download enough that you can listen to the stuff being taught all day long for minutes. See, I'm, I'm thinking the long game here. Because I, I think television is getting bad enough that we're, I have a hard time with the commercials anymore. The commercials have gotten sickening. Not even touching the programming. You know, and you can only rewatch Downton Abbey so many times. <laughs> you know. And... Uh, I think things are changing. In fact, I'm even looking at buying a speed duplicator for flash drives so that when we do have conferences. Could you imagine somebody walking away and say, okay, here's the entire biblical life library that we have so far. You can take it home. You can, and guys, it's easy. If you have a computer, there's something called drop and drag you make a subdirector on your computer, you drop and drag it over, then you can give it to somebody else. You can even buy a flash drive, stick it in there, and drop it, drag over, and next thing you know, you're a pusher. Getting people hooked. Not only on our stuff, but I mean, there's a lot of other great ministries out there, and I, I have a lot of good friends that I know are looking and doing the same thing. We are going to have to change our paradigm about things. I remember years ago, I was listening to one preacher, and he had this one guy. The guy got saved and just kept on, you know, when can I go into ministry? When can I go into ministry? When can I go into ministry? And he had his tape, and his tape table back then was like 24 foot long. And this guy pestered him so much that his, he was about ready to pull his hair out. So just to hush him up, he went and got one of everything and just gave it to the guy. And he said, go through all of this three times then talk to me about going in ministry. Okay. He comes back four years later and the guy's in ministry and has a church of 500 because he went through everything three times. The guy exploded with the knowledge of God and the fire of God. Guys, I think we're going to see that. I know myself, I was, I was asking the Lord, I said, forgive me for wanting to be distracted and I'm going to start digging deeper. 
I think that's something God's calling all of us to do because we're going to have to re-engage fully in this so that we don't lose our culture, so that we, we don't lose souls. You see, all of this is not, not about who has the biggest ministry or, or whatever. It's souls saved and souls trained because Jesus can't come back until the last soul has been trained up and is standing in the full stature of Christ. That's what I want. But we, we, have ne- we have, from this day forward, we can never be lulled asleep by the swan song of Laodicea. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Watch the new movie coming out, go to sleep. Oh, the news always tells you the truth, go to sleep. There's nothing to worry about, go to sleep. There's a giant that can stand against any Nephilim that's getting ready to rise up, and it's the body of Christ, the true remnant. We are about to see who are really of God and who are not in the days ahead by who falls away and who stands up. And guys, we can do it in love. We can do it in love. You don't have to argue the gospel. You just need to share the gospel and share your testimony. I don't, you know, it's, it's like the two kids that were fighting over chocolate cake. And the fight was one guy, his friends, because they didn't want to share chocolate cake with him, convinced him it was horrible. You know how big brothers can do sometimes? Convinced him it was horrible. Then he had a kid come to him chocolate all over his face and down his shirt and says, I don't care what your brother said. That's the best thing I ever had in my life. Well, the truth of the matter is an experience always overrules an argument. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Every one of us, God has done something in our lives that is so unique and the story of it is so powerful that there's somebody hurting out there somewhere, that that will resonate in them, that you could lead them to the Lord quicker than I could. They will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. There's more power in your testimony than you realize. Well, Mike, I don't have much of one. Press into God and get more. His, his mercies are new every morning. Tomorrow with what you're believing God for today, what he can do in your life tomorrow can create a testimony that will blow minds and win hearts to Jesus. We just got to get back in the game and be aware of our surroundings. Or like I, they used to say in the military, you need, you need to make sure your head's on a swivel. Because the Bible says that a wise man sees trouble coming and prepares. And I think that's what we're doing. I think, all, I think anybody that's hearing God is doing that. And the greatest way of preparing is, the, not, not, is not the amount of food that you have stored in your basement, it's the amount of Jesus you have stored in your heart. Then everything else is gravy. Father, we just thank you for the word today. Father, we thank you that it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish where unto you have sent it. And Father, I just ask for a refreshing and a new determination to be released in the remnant wherever they are in the world. And Father, let us start thinking strategically in all that we do, because we are in a war. And this war has been raging ever since Adam and Eve fell. And Father, give us your wisdom on how to conduct ourselves, and give us eyes to see with the eyes of Jesus in every situation we ask. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. 
Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the Kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the Principality's wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The kingdom priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.